the Behind the Whistles podcast with Des Roach and Steve Conroy in association with Roxburgh Group. Good afternoon and welcome to Behind the Whistles podcast with your host, me, myself, James Sweeney, brought to you in partnership with both Beaks Group and Roxburgh Insurance Group. I'm joined as always by former SFA Category 1 referees, Des Roach and Steve Conroy. Good afternoon, gents. How are we? Hi, James. All the better for seeing you. Thank you. Yep. All very good. And Mr. Conroy, must be good after just coming back from Bali and swimming in mud baths with elephants. I tell you I've what, slept a wink since. Where's your tan? Uh, you can't see it for the bright light you've uh, made us wear. <laughs> um, it's been a really busy weekend, um, as always. Um, it keeps us busy, so not going to complain. Uh, but we're just going to go straight into it because obviously there's a big game today and there's a lot of talking points that people want us to discuss. So we're just going to go straight in. Um, so Murren versus Hearts yesterday. A um, couple of uh, decisions made on decisions not made. Um, the first one was St. Marin, um felt they should have had a penalty. Can I get Desi's thoughts on it first? I can see why people would want it, and I could I, I could attest to it. But we've seen the fact that McMenamin's cut across him, and what's Denham meant to do to get out the road? So I can understand why it wasn't given. Um, Alan Muir made that decision, uh, and I think he's I think he's quite right too. Stephen, I don't know that. Uh, nope, I, I, I agree completely. I have to say, if I was a Samaritan supporter, I'd be paying for it. But the, the, there wasn't a foul, there wasn't a penalty, um, and well done to Alan for sticking to his guns. So no, no penalty for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought it was very similar to the one that uh, Celtic were awarded at Tyne Castle. Where Cochrane and the attack, I can't remember who the Celtic player was, but kind of cross paths and there was a, a kind of brushing. That, that's the kind of, I, I felt a very similar way about it as I did looking on that one. That And we called that one at the time and said, but then they think that was a penalty. And if it was, it was extremely soft. And that was kind of my own, my, my own thoughts on it at the time. Yeah. So we're quite unanimous on that. Then we, we didn't feel that it was a penalty and it was the right call not to give. Yeah, I'm happy yeah, with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, the. Uh, Penalty, um, Hearts penalty award. Um, it was done on a VAR review. Um, it was a handball one, which is our favourite subject these days. Um, own thoughts on it was quite close range. Kind of felt that the boy that struck it hit his elbow as he was pulled, trying to pull it around his back. Um, I think it's really cruel. Um, obviously, we've seen one today and we'll come back on that one today. That that one's a bit of closer range and it's coming um, at some speed at him and he's trying to do everything I think he feels to try and get it out of the way. It seems really, really harsh, but again, we'll go back to that current climate where we've seen them given and because uh, the handball rule is so convoluted and to open to interpretation, you can understand in, in the current climate why that was given. Um, do you have any other thoughts on that at all? No, that's pretty much it. Um you know, in the current climate, we, you know, none of us really have an idea what's uh, what's right, what's wrong. Um, but in that one, I don't see what the defender could do. I, what could you do? You've got to be somewhere. Um, and if you're a, a defender, uh, you know, other, other than, um, as we've seen everybody running about with their arms behind their back or absolutely have the palms of your hands on your hips, what, what, what can you do? Um, no, not, not for me, but in the current climate, as, as you said, you've seen, We've seen them given. Um, it's an appalling situation that we're in with handball. Yes. No, I, to totally agree. I totally agree. I think at this moment in time, the handball rule has gone. If the ball hits you, it's a penalty kick. That's that's the way it's going. That's the way it's going now. Marcus Fraser has made a genuine attempt to try and block the ball. Where's his arm meant to be? He's trying to balance himself as he's fallen. I agree under the current circumstances that it's a law and I can um, I can I can go with it. But personally, no. And I don't think any right minded football person would um, would disagree with that. What are you meant to do? The ball is hitting you. You're not hitting the ball. Yep. And I've said for long enough, Steve said for long enough, that's the way the handball should go back to deliberate or unintentional. 
a real ball to hand or hand to ball, etc. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. It's the only way that there can be no other way, and it seems to be something that we talk about every week. You know, making yourself big, um, you arm away from your body. Is it natural for a a, a, a manoeuvre? What you can absolutely say is that it's not natural to have your hands attached to your hips. It's not natural to have your hands behind your back. It's an utter farce and it's a lottery, an absolute lottery. Yep. Yeah, you've got to hope that they do something in the summer. Obviously, they can't do it midway through competition season, but you've got to think that there's been enough high-level incidents and complaints about it that, you, that you'd see IFAB looking at it. But uh, with anybody these days, you kind of lost a lack of faith. They will actually do anything to seem to just carry on these days. But yep. um, I think that there's a lot of frustration around handball. Um, and I spoke to Des about this a couple of weeks ago, actually, when I'd done some research into why the handball law was actually looked at. It was following, I think, a quite a high-profile incident in the Champions League. And when you've got these top power clubs and a decision goes against and uh, they're holding the power and influence, um, suddenly they want to start looking at something. Um, and we all suffer as a result because the rules are basically getting changed to keep the big club happy. Um, so, yeah, it's something that I would like personally to see roll back on, make it easier for yeah. fans to understand. I don't think it needed fixed in the first place, um, as what it is. Um, it's another one of those that we'll discuss and won't be the last time we discuss them this season. No, it won't be. No. Okay, um, we'll move on. Uh, the next game was Aberdeen versus Livingston. And there's a the latest storm in a key, uh, teacups coming with this one. I'm surprised actually that there's not been more in the media about it. Um, and to explain that, um, Miofsky had a goal chopped off for offside at the very end of the game, um, denying Aberdeen a win. Um, the initial phase of play is a free kick that's going long. And there's a couple of Aberdeen players that are standing in offside positions on the, while they're lined up with the defence. There's a couple of them that are off, but none of them are actually involved in interfering in play. Um, the first Aberdeen player to run on and, um, and collect the ball before he crosses it, uh, McDonald, is he looks level or he's onside because the number 11 of Livingston, who's around about the D, um, looks to be keeping him on. Um, the ball comes in for the cross. Um, it's headed by um, Gatterman and it's saved by the keeper and it drops to Miofsky and Miofsky puts it in. Both Gatterman have, uh, are onside when he heads the ball. Uh, Miofsky's onside when he puts the ball in the back of net. The referee's called to look at VAR for a reason to chop off the goal, as we keep talking about, and have decided it's offside. But I'm not seeing in that anywhere where someone was, you know, factually offside. And this is where it gets really concerning because when it was shown on sports scene, it had to explain that they didn't have the lines of the incident because they were told they weren't provided because it was so clear it was offside. And that that really really stinks, because yeah, if, you know, uh, you know, we've got um, clear and obvious, which are um, ha have some form of consideration. You know, that you, you deliberate on them. There's a decision to be made by studying the evidence, but we keep talking about offside as factual. So unless they can provide the lines and evidence of the factual decision, something's not right there. It's absolutely and utterly patronising for them to say to us, the consumer, that we don't deserve to have a look at it because they're patting us on the head and saying it's so easy you wouldn't understand, don't worry about it. Utterly and absolutely patronising, it's pathetic. Um, but it's not unusual of uh, the, the SFA that they, they, they think that they can uh, have process and procedure one minute and they ignore it the next. It's absolutely awful. Not that we have much... Um, much faith in the, the, the crayon lines that they, that they draw. But don't patronise us and say it's so obvious that we're not even going to bother or bump to show it. We, we are the consumer. They're there for our benefit, not the other way around. It's absolutely appalling. I mean, Steve, there's, that, that's a massive call in Aberdeen. They're still not safe yet in the relegation battle. That, that would have been a big uh, two points in the total yesterday and might have helped them towards safety. It's a massive decision. Absolutely. Uh, I, I say that it's, it's a factual decision, so where's the factual evidence that the referee was shown to chop that goal? Because if it wasn't yeah. shown any lines, all they've done is shown him a still of where the ball was originally struck from the free kick. How is he supposed to look along that and call it? That, it's, it's just ridiculous. 
if they haven't drawn those lines, that is a scandal. Yep, I, th- I think I think straight away the first thing we've got to say is, and and quite rightly agree with Steve is, we as a consumer, as the supporter, have been treated like mugs, but not even not even that Aberdeen have been treated with contempt there, not to show them the reason why a goal has been chopped off. Not even just a goal. It's a goal that would give them three points, would put them further up the league, would give them more money potentially in their budget for next season as well. That could be two players' two player salaries. Why are Aberdeen not being given the reasons for that to be shown? And for them to say that uh, we're, we're not shown yet, that is, that's folly. Absolute folly. Um, and I think the SPFL should be hanging their head in disgrace at that. Absolutely, SPFL and SFA to allow that to to go out. That you cannot justify why that decision was made. Yep, I can't see. Absolutely scandalous. Yeah. absolutely scandalous. It's not right. It leaves a bit of taste now, especially at a time when you know there's a lot of conspiracy theories and things floating about. They should be really tight on these things. They're leaving themselves wide open to criticism. Um, yeah, Aberdeen, I feel you're owed an apology. That's my personal opinion on it. I feel you're... A, I, I think there's been an error made there and I wouldn't be surprised if they've just passed that off as, as the excuse. Um, I feel you're owed an apology on that one. Um, Dundee versus Motherwell. Uh, penalty to Motherwell, the handball. Again, it's, it's one of those we talk about trying to get the arm out of the way. It's at close range. Nothing much you can do as it's coming towards you. It's a really harsh call, but in the current climate, again, you can understand why that's given. That's how I yeah. saw it. Is that how you both saw it? Yeah. The, you know, how many times have, have we said it? In a sane world, that should never be anywhere approaching even being considered for a penalty. But in the current climate, yep, ab- yeah, dead set per- uh, penalty. Yeah, it's not It's not too unsimilar to the, uh, the Marcus Fraser one uh, in the Swan Hearts. Joe Shaughnessy is there. The player's taking a shot at him. I'm sorry, I've, I've used the analogy a thousand times, but unless you're Usain Bolt, you're not getting your hand out of that way. It's ball to hand. It's not hand to ball. So I don't agree with it, but under current climate and under current um, interpretations of it, I can understand it. Okay. I mean, the, one of the decisions itself is probably the most contentious point in the game. Um, obviously, other than whether the game should have been on. Other, yeah. other than the pitch. I, I was hoping that you weren't going to open that conversation <laughs> up again because that'll be the rest of the hour taken up. Um, now, I think we made a fairly perfect well, point we yesterday. Made point. Yeah. yeah, we made a point that on that one, um, it's not right, but I'll see what you've done. Um, Hibs versus St Johnston. Um, Oh, crikey, Marcondes um, headers a ball cleaned out by the the goalkeeper uh, Mirov. No, uh, no, no var check. Um, astonishing stuff for me. Astonishing. Um, maybe that was just me. What, what, what did you both think of it? I mean, Des, do you want to? What's your thoughts on it? I'll go first. I've seen boxers hit people less than that. That was an absolute stonewall red card. The goalkeepers came out, he went absolutely uh, through him. I don't care whether he gets the ball. He's taking him with his hands and he's taking him with his knee as well. So um, it's a red card. The referee, Grant Irvin, I thought could probably have got it on, on the field. But how David Monroe and VAR didn't pick it up, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and disappointed at it. I don't like picking on certain referees, but that's about the third time we've mentioned David Monroe's name in three weeks. I mean, his decision to hear, um, he's sent off. I mean, I don't know how you can make so many blatant errors. They're not even like um, contentious and not for argument or debate. They're just clear, they seem clear wrong errors. The you know and Des calls me Mister Mitigation. You you look for you, you look for mitigation in um, the the ref. Who was it again? Was it Grant? Grant Irvin. Grant Irvin. Um, you know we've all we've all missed things on the pitch. You get one look at it. He might have been blinking. There might have been people crossing his view. You know what whatever. Um, but he, he should have seen it. Um, but you know that that won't be the, the last time that he 
He makes mistakes like that because he's human and we've all done it. He gets one look at it. What? I, I have absolutely no idea what David was looking at if he didn't think that was worth a review. He, he punched him in the face and kneed him in the groin at the same time. You know, it's, it's obviously not nearly as good, but it's up there with the Schumacher assault all those years ago. It's I, I don't know what, honestly, I don't know what he was thinking. How did we get to Schumacher? <laughs> punching and punching and booting at the same time. Uh, um, he's, he's thinking Michael Schumacher dragging uh, for Ferrari. I know. <laughs> No, old Harold, do you remember? I'd look that one up if you've not seen it. Who was, a lines- who was a linesman in that game? You. I, what, 19, 1982 in Spain? <laughs> I was six. Don't, don't know who was a linesman. Bob Valentine. Oh, well, there you are. Um, but it was absolutely, <laughs> absolutely shocking. God knows how he didn't see that. God, God knows. Can I get a He's question? Late, he, yeah, question for you on that one. What's the card well, implications if it does? They do look at it. I mean, would it would it be red or is it with it yellow? What what's the options open to a referee there if they had they had given the foul? Uh, anything. It's up to them. Whatever sanction they want to apply for any foul. Um, was it violent? Was it serious foul play? Uh, denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. You'd have to have one of them for them to uh, to to red card them. Personally, I don't think. Any of them uh, apply, even though I've just said he, he punched them in the head and he uh, need them. Every goalie goes up with their uh, with their knees up, um, and I think you could argue that he mistimed. You know, be, being polite or lenient, he mistimed his his tackle, um, and you know, going to punch the ball as a tackle for a, a goalie. So I think at, at the very least, then that was reckless and dangerous. Um, so should have been a yellow, but I don't think it'd be beyond that. But it's it's up to the ref what sanction he gives, but. He, if David has deemed that there wasn't a foul in there, then there's no card to be considered. Yeah. No, the, minim- the minimal, the minimal that it's to be given, it should be a yellow for reckless yeah. and dangerous. And <clears throat> the, the, the sanction that goes, that goes thereafter. But uh, how it was missed, I uh, really, I can't, I can't comprehend it. And I, I can't defend it and I won't defend it. Agreed. <sighs> Perhaps again, I think you're due an apology. <laughs> so, I mean, like, well, they do, they do do these audits of VAR, and they say it's an independent panel that then obviously give their opinions and whether something's been right or wrong, and they proclaim that they've got ninety eight point three percent or something correct on um, so far in the season when they re- did the re- review at the end of January, um, and it was thirteen thirteen errors that they said that pointed out thirteen errors. We've, we've, we've been on, this is week five for us. I can probably count about 2025. So it's going to be really interesting to see when that next review is done, how many errors, because I think it's going to show things are not got better, they've got worse. See when it's an independent panel, who's paying for them? Who's hiring them? Yes. We'll have a longer conversation on that one time, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Let's keep it light, let's keep it lighthearted. <laughs> I know it's been one of those days already. Let's uh, let's keep it lighthearted. Um, I do want to point out in this game before we move on about the lad um, CDB, um who followed his overhead kick goal last week with an amazing run from halfway, cut in for a tight angle, calm composed finish. Um, he looks a real find, like uh, an absolute diamond. The, um, yeah. If he keeps those performances going, then St. Johnston are going to really struggle to keep a hold of him. He does something special about him. Um, they signed him on a free from Warrington Rylands in the Northern Power League, which is the seventh pyramid of English football. And he's scoring worldies and solo runs in, in the Scottish Premiership. So he has come from a pub team to running through right. the defence. Right, where are we saying, right? Don't upset the Hibs fans, please, Steve. <laughs> he upsets everybody else. Too late. They're already upset <laughs> after yesterday. Do you know who's the manager of Warrington Rylands? Oh, you don't know the answer to this. I do. <sighs> Go on then. Dean Furman. Really? Yes. So, do you think there's any link for him to Levine and how he managed to unearth and sign this uh, lad? Say to me. I don't know. It's not what you know, it's who you know. 
Uh-huh. And the only, reason, the only reason I know it is because I listened to another podcast um, during the week there. Not as good, not as, good as our podcast, obviously. <gasps> um, but, and it was Dean Furman. And I remember refereeing him back in goodness knows how long ago. And he's, he's the manager of... He's a manager of Warrington Rylands. Oh, there you go. What a coincidence that I brought that up. There you go. Des, Des, James, Des, James, I've always called you Stato, but no. Des isn't a mile behind you now. No, he's just a geek boy. He really is. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I do think it's enjoying. It's going to really struggle to keep a hold of him. He looks yeah, a real, real thing. Yeah, yeah he's a, he, looks a, he looks a talent. Well, yeah. Yeah. And before we move away from... That one, I know there wasn't anything else happened, um, but how tight the offside was for that one. <clears throat> um, but what a cracking call from the assistant. Yeah. He saw that straight away, waved it on, um, told the ref that he was on, and it was a cracking decision without any automation, just being good at what you do. Yeah, and we've got to be fair on that. As critical as we are, sometimes we will we will see when something yeah. is done right. You're quite right. Um, Kilmarnock versus Ross County. Um, the only thing that I've got to report on this game is the the, the winds in Ayrshire were crazy yesterday. Um, there was a video of the, the uh, a, uh, I got into trouble for calling it the juniors on X the other day. It's not the juniors anymore. It's the West of Scotland. Super League of that right? And I get into trouble for one of the clubs for saying, we're not the juniors anymore, we've taken out our name. Apologies. Uh, I, I grew up in the Usher, it's always going to be the juniors to me. It's always the juniors. It's always I, the juniors. I know. <laughs> but it, it was the Troon um, FC account who put up a goalkeeper taking a bye kick and ending up in the sea. That's, like, it's unreal. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, Kamala's is just two minutes up the road from there, so you can expect what the wind and conditions were like. Um I'm going to let you off for saying uh, a bye kick, James. We'll not pull you up for that. Oh, come on. I already got enough grief for calling the laws the rules. Laws, it's the laws. <laughs> um, what I will say in the game, the Kilmarnock fans at full time on X had been saying, oh, you and Anderson's performance is terrible, but I didn't see anything in the highlights to suggest that he performed badly. But, I mean, I'm not seeing the 90 minutes. Maybe you're right. Maybe he's missed a few things you didn't agree with, etc. But another three points in the bag, so I'm, not, I'm sure. Or maybe you just getting the blame for a really, really boring game. Well, he was he was nah. causing he was causing the wind. Aye, it'd be his fault. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing to report on that game. Another three points for Kilmarnock. Um secures us top six, doesn't it? So we're now going to chase down a Europe place, and there's a couple of clubs in the contention there. Um, some are in also achieving the same. Um. So, on to the big one uh, from the weekend, from today, um, that a lot of people have already at us um, with questions, etc. We're not going to be able to get through everything um, that people are asking in viewpoints. Um, we will give our own. Uh, I'm going to start with the VAR penalty against Goldson. Um, Steve, you were actually on a guest appearance on the Daily Record blog today, so you've already given your views on the incident. If, yep. Just for the sake of our own viewers, if you just want to clarify your own views on that one, and then I'll get Des's comments on it. On the Goldson one, it's one of one of my high horse uh, causes. Uh, in a sane world, that's never a penalty. Um, he didn't. He didn't come out a foul. He wasn't trying to get an advantage from doing what he was doing. He had made a fair attempt, I think, at uh, defending. His arms weren't in an outrageous position. He wasn't using his arms weren't above his head. Um, but in the current climate, having your elbow out like that is making yourself big and it's unnatural. So in the current climate, that's a penalty. Should never be, but... In the current climate, every day that's a penalty. Yeah. So before the old law came in, that was probably one that you would look at and say, you know, there's nothing deliberate about that. No. But obviously, they've taken the deliberate aspect out and they've added all this thing about sleeve sleeve lines and um, frames and we've seen the diagrams. Everybody, everybody's looked at them and had a good chuckle at them. Um, Des, do you have any different opinion on that? Uh no, no, no. I uh, I concur with what Steve said. But what I'm most surprised at is that's probably the first time the Harlem Globetrotter 
has conceded a penalty. <laughs> Still the best goalie in Scotland. Yeah. Alan, Alan, Alan McGregor's passed on his passed on his mantle well. Yeah, he's. Um, I know there have been a couple in the past where he's been caught with the limbs flailing, and um, in some cases, quite rightly, has put his hands up to protect his face, and that's been taken into consideration. But I know there's been a lot of people talking about the ones that weren't. Is that what we're it. saying? He put it up to protect his face. Is that? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, I agree. Um, I agree completely. Um, it's it's a penalty in, in the current climate and under the the current I five laws. Uh, there's no complaints. I think anyone really has about it. Um, VAR penalty Johnson on Silver. Um, one thing I want to raise on this before we move on is the video that we got on the TV originally and what the VAR decision was based on. On this was from one camera from the line looking back onto it I did just as before we went on live send you one that shows you a diagonal camera and go looking at it and that kind of changed my decision from a way of being unsure if there was any contact to from what I've seen on that and I'll share it as a, on the screen um, when this goes out that it looks appears to be actually clear contact and there was an important lesson for me on this one as well was that um the pundits are giving their views on it because Silva has previously already gone to the ground after an interaction with Alistair Johnson um, where he's been rolling around and he's already getting labelled um, effectively a cheat by the pundits that are on the telly at the time and critical. And I've seen a lot of Rangers fans as well saying that they weren't really happy with Silva rolling around. They'd rather have been just up and getting on with it. But I don't think that's done him any favours when it's come to this decision because he was immediately, the minute he went down, they went, he's dived. Um, we had Chris Sutton saying it I heard Kenny Miller say it um, effectively as well um, but when you actually look back as, uh, on it then I'm not sure that Johnston's foot makes any contact with the ball at all, um, Silva has got an opportunity to get back to the ball, Johnston's leg is across Silva and as he brings it across it does strike his knee whether the contact's enough to go down or not that's a, that nobody can know that for sure but I can see why the uh, uh, John Beaton was called by Nick Walsh to go and look at that, and I can understand we've seen that in in slower motion or whatever to see the contact and to award the penalty. Um, it's one of those. It is, it is for me. I don't think it, I, I don't think there's no contact, and if there is contact, then it becomes a, a contentious matter as to whether it was enough to go down. But for me, I can see why it was given and have no problems why it was given. Des. Uh, it's a con- it's a contentious one for me. Um, I can understand why it was given. I don't think that Silva helped himself with his antics um, prior in the game. And when you get the other view on it, is there enough contact for him to go down? And I know that's not always the case anymore because any contact now is deemed to be a penalty. Um, Personally, would I be looking for it? Mm, I don't know, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not convinced by it. I can accept it, but I'm not convinced by it. Um, and I just and I, we can't get away with what we said previously. Fabio Silva's antics um, prior to that were embarrassing. Yeah, but I did think it was a bit embarrassing. I did think it was a bit disappointing because people are led by the commentary they're getting on the game, and when two people are saying he's got, he, you know, he's been doing soft there or he's or he's cheated, he's dived right. That's that's the impression. Chris Chris, Chris Sutton's words were along the lines of, um, "It's an, an absolute dive. He's being rewarded for a dive." Whereas the video, you've got, I mean, it's people are blaming John Beaton for giving that, right? And it's Nick Walsh who's it's John not Beaton. John, who's given John it. never not, gave it. No. no. Nick, Nick Walsh has called John Beaton to look at it. Nick Walsh is convinced there's contact in the angles that he's looking at. If he's then showing John Beaton and he's convinced of the contact and what he's looking at, then that's two referees that are convinced that that's an infringement in the foul. That's not on John Beaton alone. You know, that's, that's Nick Walsh has called them. That's their opinion that that was a foul. And that's why I can accept that decision. Yeah. That, <clears throat> listen, I've got no issue, no issue with that at all. Nick has seen it differently from John because he's got obviously got different angles on it from John. Right? That's what VAR's there for. 
John's came across, him and Nick have obviously had a conversation and they've agreed to go with it. Personally, in my opinion, is there enough contact there? No, I don't think there is. But I understand when somebody sticks a leg out, they run the risk of another player taking the opportunity. And to go back to what you were saying about the, the pundits, I think it is entirely wrong of Chris Sutton to have went down the route he's went. Now, I would never use the word cheat because I think that's that's a, that's an embellishment on any particular player. But his antics before it were embarrassing on that one incident, which is the only one that we can... Sorry to clarify, that that's can, the Johnson incident where him and Johnson have come together and it looks as if Johnson has 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 made contact with him. He was booked for it, was contact, but we, you know, well, we felt it. And I think most people can't deny... The rolling about and holding his face, it didn't want that for what the level of contact that was seen. Um, no, but, I think but, we, we, we've seen Silver go down a, a few times during the game, rolling about, and then all of a sudden got up and, and he's running away. And you're like, well, you're clearly trying to con somebody. But with, with, with regards to the penalty incident, it's not enough. it's not enough contact to make a penalty for me. Steve? I agree completely. Um, the, and we'll, we'll go back to the first one when he went down with the, the, the first Alistair Johnson tackle that what he did there was an utter and absolute affront he, the, the sole outcome that he was looking for there was to deceive John Beaton deceive the ref, uh, ref and to get his opponent sent off there's, there's nothing, there's no other way around it that is cheating. I won't call him a cheat, but that was cheating. Um, and everybody's allowed a one-off. Um, if that is repeated, then you, you might have to reconsider it. But that incident there was was cheating. Um, and at the very least, he should have been yellow carded. And as Des and I have said umpteen times before, that should be a retrospective red card. It was utterly disgraceful. Um, and I always look at these things with the, the, the doctor head on. See if you've got something that is sore. The last thing you want to do is move it. So he's rolling about, writhing on the ground. You know instantly that nothing's sore. It's It was an absolute embarrassment. You should be ashamed and so should his club. Um, as for the penalty, I don't think it was a penalty. Um, I think he was going down already um, and I think what John gave on the field was absolutely the correct decision I'm not denying that there might not have been uh, contact in that but not all contact is, is a foul um, and if you look at it uh, Johnson was trying to get his leg out out the way so there was no there was no attempt there was no trip there was no foul the way I see it that John called it correctly but my great bugbear about VAR, and we've just demonstrated it, there's, there's three of us here, three uh, differing opinions, each one of them absolutely valid and each one of them absolutely uh, justifiable, which means there was no clear and obvious error. And we must, we have to come to a place where the game isn't re-refereed and going on the opinion of the VAR. Where in the laws of the game does it say in the opinion of VAR? It doesn't. If you think differently uh, in a challenge from the way that I do, and it's just an opinion, keep your opinion to yourself. You're there to correct fact, and that's why VAR should not have been involved in that. Okay. okay. I think everybody said their piece on that one then. Um the last one was the. Uh... That, that was another bugbear of mine. <laughs> They're all coming out today. <laughs> this, this is just your therapy session. Just come on here at the event. I can tell you this: you're not going to go and be down to down to government to buy a pint of milk anytime soon, are you? <laughs> no. When's the last time I could no. do that? You have no idea the amount of traffic on that you're going to drive towards the account tonight. Um, <laughs> I'm um, just as a wee shaggy dog story. I've been booed <laughs> off many a pitch in my time. Ibrox is the only place I've been booed on. <laughs> why, why, why were you booed on? And that, I, that was the time that, I was there. I, and it was me. <laughs> um, 
the last one in that game was the, the Rangers uh, original equaliser for two each that was chopped um, coming quickly after the penalty was scored. It was, I think it was only a few minutes later. Um, it's a funny as we talk about them all the time. Far going back and looking for reasons to chop off goals. Um, they've gone back to the very start of the phase in play. Um, looks at football contact. Doesn't look as if there's a lot in that at all. Not enough to chop a goal off for me. Um, it really isn't. Um, I'm not sure it's clear and obvious header uh, for why you'd want to look and call it for that. Um, again, it's a re-refereeing of games decision for me. And um, I'm just at a loss with our when it comes to these things to, like, to go back and look over back and back looking for reasons to chop off goals. It is just one, another one of those for me. Um, um, Steve, how did you see that one? I much along the same sort of lines, um, and I, I think it it so takes away from the enjoyment of the game that you know, you, you score and automatically you just stand still looking for VAR, looking for somebody to chop the goal off. That that's what it's become a fancy goal chopper off. Um, and you know, I I don't have again in the current climate, I don't have an issue with it being chopped off because there's no time scale to it. And they can look as far back as the beginning, you know, define it, the beginning of the attacking move that led to the goal. So the fact that they go back the three days to the beginning of when that attack became offensive and the current climate, I, I don't have an issue with it being chopped off. I, I, I do think it's it's a nonsense and surely we must be using VAR for better purposes than looking for reasons to disallow goals. Des? I hate to hate to keep saying it. I totally agree. It's almost anti-football, isn't it? If if John thought at that moment in time it was a foul, he would have given it. That's 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 a that's a clear and obvious. The guy still got another what well, was it almost at the halfway line, so you've got another forty yards of play to still progress to then have that impact on a goal to chop it off. So no, don't I don't agree with the goal being chopped off at all. Um I think it was. I think it was wrong. And again, VAR's there for clear and obvious errors. You're not there. To see if it's there for clear and obvious errors. That's what it's for. See if you want to re-referee games. We'd be here for two weeks to play one game, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah. It would be. It, it's ridiculous. So, I entirely, do not think that goal should have been chopped off. I think taking it back that far was wrong. And John's the man in the park. John's the one in control. He's seen it. Halfway line. No. Play on. Okay. That's it. Go on, mate. Do, do you think that's a clear and obvious error? No. Steve? Uh, no, not especially. Um, and VAR, again, a foul looks different to everybody else. Um, and I just, I, I don't think that it's well, fair on the team that gets goal disallowed, but I don't think it's fair on the, the ref that somebody's going to look all the way back to see a, a foul that started the move that, that they scored from. Um, I don't think it's fair, but as I said before, in the, the current climate, the, the laws being the laws, not that I like them, I don't have an issue with that being chopped off. But again, it's, it's re-refereeing, it's asking somebody else what their opinion on a foul is when it's already been given by the referee. Um, it's, it's a nonsense, but it's that that's where we are it's a horrible lazy phrase but it's it's true in this instance that's exactly where we are it's having it's having two referees on every game yeah yeah um i just like to close off on the actual game itself because um, we had talked through the week about saying you know we don't want the game to be decided by a VAR decision um and uh the criticism that obviously has been aimed at John Beaton over the weekend, we've, we've, we've been quite um, honest about our opinion on, on our referee, whether he was right or wrong, he was put in that position um, to referee that game, depending on what side of argument people are on on that, that he would remain professional and, and do his duty. And I don't think he had a terribly bad game. Um, I think he, he might have shown um, more conviction in his own decision making at times, but... Um, Considering the situation he was in in such a high push pressure game, I thought he, 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 they'd done a really uh, decent job. I think that um, 
Nick Wilson Vars did a relatively decent job as well. Um, but football won in the end because it's moments of brilliance that um, the led to that football match uh, ending up level. Um, there was um, a great pass in for the finish from Ida. There was um, a, a great finish, obviously, from Matondo. Mantondo. Um, that that's football deciding football matches. I was quite happy that um, we got an outcome that was based on the talent that we seen on the park on the day. And I really commend the managers at full time mm-hmm. when players were going at each other and they immediately went to the park and they grabbed their own players and pulled them away and put them back in line. And that often doesn't happen enough these days. And I think it did some of their uh, done, done some of their um, own players a favour. Because I think if it was allowed to boil over, it could have uh, turned into a couple of cards elsewhere that might come back and bite later. So I applaud them both for coming out of the park and getting their players in line. Um, I thought it was a really good game of football. It's a great advert. It's the biggest selling point for Scottish football. And I think any neutral that's looking on that um, today would say, wow, you know, that's, that's the spectacle. We haven't seen um, a game like that for a number of years um, between the two. So, yeah, um, as far as I'm concerned, it, it was the football in the park that won today. I'd rather that people talk about that than, than VAR. I know that doesn't happen. And I've been consistent in that message for the last couple of weeks that you will, will get so caught up talking about referees and VAR that we forgot to talk about the moments of brilliance and the talent. And when you want to bring talent to this country, if they suddenly get picking up the paper or reading social media the next day about the moment of brilliance and instead it's been discussed about what the referee done on the day that's a really sad state of affairs I think there's some, some great moments in today's game to talk about um, and I hope it's not overshadowed by um, the decisions because as far as I'm concerned I was relatively satisfied with every decision made in the game do you have any closing comments Steve? I think it was a cracking game of football um, as much as it's possible to be I hope that they talk about the cracking game of football um, but sadly we all live in the same place so we know that that penalty is going to be discussed but it was a cracking game and other than disagreeing with John changing his mind I thought the team had a great game um, I wish he'd stuck to his guns but he had a great game and we've been at pains in the last few years when talking about the Celtic Rangers games to commend all the uh, all the match officials all the teams involved because it's not like the the the, hay, uh, the old days, the heydays, when you were getting two, three uh, sent off and defenders were grabbing forward by the throat. It's paid in a sporting, friendly manner. There's one or two individuals who let themselves down, but otherwise, I think you commend everybody involved in both teams. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> I agree. I thought that after the first 10 minutes, obviously Celtic, taking that early lead. Um, John was quite happy to let the reins go, let let, yep. let the players go for it. I thought a couple of Celtic players, I thought Carter Vickers was pushing it. Um, but what a great game. What a great, Three each, goals chopped off, penalties awarded, nobody sent off, and both managers um, commendably looking, at, looking after the players at, at the end. What a game. What again? Yep. yep. Well, again, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, thank you so much again. Um, again to our sponsors, Beaks Group and Roxburgh Insurance Group. And if you need insurance, the great people at Roxburgh Insurance will help you out. I want to thank Des and Steve for their time as always. And um, thank you very much for all your support, your content, and, and keep uh, keep messaging us, um, keep watching the videos, uh, follow, like, and subscribe. It's behind TW Pod on YouTube, on X. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Take care all. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.
Cheers.